Hello. The knowledge that is about to be shared through this report is a knowledge that you will never forget. This is about the history of United States dollars and gold. How the world has evolved from a then gold standard to the current fiat system. And the current fiat system has given rise to the digital economy, also known by the name cryptocurrencies and CBDCs, which are central bank digital currencies. We want to first understand how the world has evolved to the current state and what it all means to us for the future. So it's important for us to understand the history of things. Having said that, I want to show you this beautiful world map, which basically shows 195 countries using about 180 different national currencies. With US dollar being at the helm and all the other US dollars, all the other national currencies being pegged to the US dollar. That means US controls the other currencies in the world in a way. Having said that and talking about the gold standard, I want to take you back into the history, back with clean slate, back in the year 1893, the end of the 19th century. There were a lot of world trades, obviously, between the different nations in the world, but there was no standardized policy or rule because every country used to print their own national currencies. There was a lot of inflation and there was a lot of deflation. There was less of a deflation and more of inflation. And there was no standard at all. And there was a question on which, so if I were to sell some goods to another country, what is the currency that I want to accept? Usually it used to be gold because that is something that has been used for 5,000 years. So given that there was no standard for trade and commerce, US came with a plan and with other nations, they agreed that one US dollar will be equal to 1.50 grams of gold. In other words, 1,000 US dollars would have fetched about 1.5 kg of gold. With this standard, what this means is all the nations to the world will be able to print only as much money as their own gold reserves. So they cannot print unlimited. This was the policy that they tried to set in stone. So what happened was we moved in the era towards World War I, where there was, of course, a lot of spending and countries had to spend. And since countries could not spend too much because they can only sp spend as much as the gold reserves they had. And mind you, gold was pretty much evenly distributed across the globe with more gold with the, with the countries like United Kingdom, which were, you know, ruling all the other countries like Africa and Asia and getting gold from all these countries. However, in World War I, what happened was because of war, United Kingdoms, because U UK was heavily involved in this World War I, along with other European nations, the UK's deficit, as an example, went up from 600 million to $8 billion. Whereas US staying out of this war, they were doing good in their economy with their exports tripling from about $2.4 billion to more than $6 billion. Fast forward this to the Second World War era, and this is when UK was again heavily involved and US was not involved until the time of Pearl Harbor. And that is where the UK's deficit rose to $21 billion, which was three times their gross domestic product. So if you compare the UK's debt while they were on this gold standard before the World War I was 600 million and that rose to $21 billion. And at the same time, US economy was really doing well because they were doing all the exports and because of which, because of which they gained 70% of the gold reserve in the world. In other words, I want to just lead you through this particular agreement, which was Lend-Lease Agreement. This is signed between in the nine, early 1940s during the World War II era where US economy was doing well and they used to export aircraft, foodstuff, ammunition, war, war, watercrafts, machinery, petroleum products to the world. And in return, they said, hey, you got to give me US dollars or you got to give me gold. Which one do you want to give me? Of course, the other nations 
could not print their own US dollars, right? They did not have reserve of US dollars and they needed these stuff for war and other things. And they said, okay, we're gonna give you gold. And that is how they got gold. So the stash of gold increased tremendously. And this is when US gave $50 billion of loan to 30 countries. And a lot of nations started becoming indebted to the United States. And in 1944, they brought together 44 member nations through the world towards something called the Bretton Woods Agreement, where they would be agreeing for how international trade would be conducted. With US becoming the helm that the global world currency and all the other currencies will be pegged to the US dollar at a particular rate. Well, what is the benefit, you ask, for all the other world nations? Well, the answer is simple. 70% of the gold reserves was with the United States. That means it's, we are only left with 30% of the gold with the rest of the world countries like Europe, UK, and everybody else. And they wanted to get back the gold. And the agreement in Bretton Woods was that US can only print as much as US dollars as they have the gold reserves. So in a way that if the exports of other countries go really well in the future, they can exchange that with the, U, with the gold reserves that US have and get back their gold. So that was the benefit to all the other countries. However, we want to go forward and just introduce what really happened. So US was doing well and their gold reserve kept increasing and US dollar was becoming popular. It was the world currency. They started something called the IMF, International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. So their purpose was to, uh, you know, there were a lot of countries affected after the second world war. And so they funded these institutions. It's kind of like a bank, which is going to give loan to all the other countries in US dollars. So in return, they have to return back it with interest. Since they had a lot of US dollars, they can just give it to the people and basically make money off of it in a way. So fast forward this. The another reason why US dollar became popular is Saudi Arabia. Let me introduce you to what happened. So back in 1941, the president of the United States, uh, Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, what he uh, said was, hey, uh, you know, we have amazing technology to extract oil from ground. So United States and the United Kingdom had amazing technology, good technology to extract oil from ground, which is something that Saudi Arabia did not have. And they spotted an oil field that, hey, Saudi Arabia has a lot of oil. and the knowledge of which even Saudi did not have. So it was basically not a rich country as we know today. It was not really an oil country as we know today. So they just went there and said, hey, listen, uh, we're going to supply this equipment to extract oil. And that is the same time uh, that what happened was while they were extracting oil, Italy had bombed the oil fields in Saudi Arabia and which actually destroyed some of its infrastructure. And that got Saudi worried and they said, that, hey, listen, US, uh, you got amazing equipment. Could you please protect us from other nations, you know, uh, spoiling our oil fields? And the US said, absolutely, we're going to help you. And what happened then? They supplied all the equipment. So US was basically a big brother or backing for Saudi Arabia. And that is the time when there was an agreement between the president of the United States and the uh, uh, with the king of Saudi Arabia, I believe, Abdulaziz, where they said that, all right, we going to uh, we going to agree that all the US, all the oil export that goes from the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, is going to be exchanged only for the U.S. dollars, and so that strengthened the U.S. dollar way more. So this was the rise of the Middle East, and going forward, there was this OPEC ad agreement, which is Organizations for Petroleum Export Countries, signed in 1960, which stated that all the oil that is produced in the world in most of the nations, big nations, oil producing nations, is going to be dealt with only exchange with US dollars. And what happens is that everything is now in US dollars across the world because that's the trusted currency. And well, this leads us to 1971 because what happened was all these countries having US dollars started exchanging it for gold. And what happened was the 70% of the gold reserves that US had started decreasing, declining to from something like 25,000 tons to 10,000 tons. And this is where US started getting worried. Well, having said that, since the reserves decreased so much that US had a lot of US dollars with them, but less of gold, they got off the gold standard 
and that is where they started with the US Treasury bonds well probably they already had but this is where it kind of came into the limelight where they borrowed money from the institutional investors or other foreign countries other nations where they invest in, into Treasury bonds what that means is US is going to give back the money with interest so if I lend them hundred dollars they would say to me that okay you got to choose five years ten years thirty years bonds and I say five years they're going to pay me interest every quarter or every year depending on the uh, on the package that you've selected with the Treasury bonds and uh, so they're going to give back so that is the trust you would have in the US dollar or the government that they're going to pay you back with interest and that's where people find the safe backing of the US government but today as of 2022 foreign countries hold about 7.4 trillion dollars in the US securities and what that means is this is a matter of concern because the question arises what if the US collapses under its own debt or what if this situation happened which has happened what if the government freezes your assets what if there's a war with Russia or what is already happening Russian assets have been frozen in the United States so they can just say hey listen we're not, we not going to give you back this money I'm sorry and this is where we have ushered into the digital economy where you are your own bank and this is also where the government realizes all the nation realizes that the future is towards a digital economy so while we had the US dollars and while all these things are happening the citizens have got an alternative and that is also the reason why the government is wanting to go towards central bank digital currencies because then they would like to control the US dollar so CBDC is just a form of the current fiat system which is nothing but digital having said that I just want to say what's happening since the US got off the gold standard this graph basically shows the US national debt when US got of the gold standard the US debt was about 500 billion dollars which was quite a bit for that time but still it was manageable but soon in 1980s the US debt hit 1 trillion and soon after in about 30 40 years right now in 2022 US debt hits 31 trillion dollars the inflation when US hit 1 trillion debt was about 15 percent the inflation today stands about 8 percent may not seem that much but you should understand that the US debt so as the inflation is way higher the rate of rise of US debt naturally increases much faster and that's what has been happening through the history so US keeps increasing their interest rates and that is what they do to decrease the inflation however it's a cat and mouse game and this the genie is out of the bottle this is just going to go to 50 trillion dollars in the next three to four years and perhaps if US dollar still exists it'll go to 100 trillion and at some point it has to blow up it has to blow up it has to come down on its own debt because they did the mistake of going off the gold standard and doing their own spending the way they like and that is not how the world should work and this is an interesting part you see this person having this big back a nation saddled with debt will have less to invest in its own future rising debt means fewer economic opportunities for Americans or other nations rising debt reduces business investments and slows economic growth it also increases expectations of higher interest higher rates of inflation and erosion of confidence in the US dollar this is exactly what debt means and this is exactly what is happening I hope you understand whatever has been presented debt is a heavy burden and last but not the least I want to just say couple of things about the digital economy that we are heading into on the right you see Bitcoin which is a self-sovereign asset it provides a balance between the government censorship because this is a transparent blockchain and the reason I wanted to cover the story right from the late the, the late 19th century 
to where we are today because this is important for our audience to understand that the future lies with two things the governments are going to do what they want to do and we have the digital economy and when talking about bitcoin the money flows very easily through the internet it's a magic internet money as they say it's a internet of money so it's possible for anybody to convert the us dollars and let's say send it to russia or some other nation that they feel like it's like at the speed of light it's like basically energy which flows from one place to the other and that is with money and if that kind of a flight of money happens it certainly gets the government concerned and what bitcoin is basically it's a decentralized currency which has a balance between the government censorship and it gives you the property rights so if you hold a piece of the pie if you hold a piece of bitcoin that means as long as you don't give out the key as long as you hold your own keys the private keys to the currency then it belongs to you nobody can seize it the only problem is it can be tracked on the blockchain because it's a transparent blockchain and that's what brings me to monero here as you see on the left there it basically zeros or makes the government censorship zilch nada absolutely zero as the technology as per the mathematics of encryption so what it does is basically does not let anybody track where the funds are basically be spent it's basically monero is nothing but bitcoin with a huge ton of privacy protection so once so what monero says is my business is none of your business nobody can track and trace on the blockchain it's completely hidden from a third person's eyes if you deal with a person another person or it's only the business between you and him nobody in the outside world would ever know or at least right now with this current technology knows where the money went and that is what gives us strong property rights so while bitcoin is a speed sweet spot in the economy the future would naturally be decided between currencies like bitcoin and other currencies like monero which gives privacy guarantees and that is all i have from this presentation i hope you learned something new about the history of the us dollar and the end of gold standard and also how we are moving towards the future of digital currencies i want to wish you all well and hope to see you all in the future bye bye